In the morning, I like to sit in my favorite chair and have a little tea, but I got no place to put my cup. So I designed this, a nice holder for my coffee and maybe a cookie or two. I'll show you how I made this and a little electronics tool on today's Film of Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. The arm cup holder is actually really easy to make. The first thing I did was take some measurements of my chair and then took those to Tinkercad to start the design. I took those measurements and reproduced a representation of the arm. And all I did was take two elements, a box element and a cylinder. And the cylinder I stretched into an oval to the dimensions that I had measured on the chair. And then I grouped those two together and made it into a hole and this would represent the chair. So then the cup holder would fit it nicely. Now the cup holder itself, I'll explain in a minute, but the top of it had another box element that I rounded with the radius tool and then recessed it into the top and that gave me a little bit of a lip around the top of the thing. Now the cup holder itself is actually just a box element again that I, with rounded edges. And then I just used two boxes, actually one box wasn't big enough, so I just duplicated it. Those two boxes at an angle to make a nice angled side to this thing. And then group those together and really that's it. Once I grouped everything together, that was the whole cup holder that fit the arm. This is a large design, so I needed a large printer to print it. And I chose to use my TiVo Tornado that I'm evaluating. And it printed it just fine, although I used a 5% infill and a real thin wall, and I actually dropped this thing and cracked it, as you can see here. So I need to print this a lot more solid and just a better print overall, but that would take a lot longer. I just wanted a quick one to test this out. I also put felt on the inside, which I just glued in place with uh, super glue, because I didn't want it to scratch the leather. The plastic would definitely scratch the leather when I slid it on. So when I slid it on, it fit nicely. My dimensions were perfect. The front of this looks terrible because I didn't use supports. I can't blame the tornado for this. This is really just a quick and dirty print because I plan to reprint this with more infill, probably a little different color that matches the chair a little better. But overall, I'm happy with the design and now I have a place to put my cup. I also wanted to print an IC pin straightener. Here's one from Jeff Thompson that I found on Thingiverse and here's another version of it by user Stig also on Thingiverse for wider chips. Why do you need this? Because when you buy chips, the pins are actually bent out. That's for machines to, to insert them and hold them in place, but when you do it manually, those bent pins won't allow you to insert it into the circuit board. So that's where a manual pin straightener comes in handy. So I printed out the pieces for both the regular version or thinner version and then the wider version. And then I drilled out the hole so I could start to screw and then I just screwed these in to make my own threads. Once that was done, I took the screws back out and then I began assembling this. I had most of the, in fact, I had all the screws and springs in my drawers full of junk. So I started to assemble it. I got springs on one side of the center piece and then springs on the other. And then I put the final piece together and then screwed both screws equal distance into the block. And when I was done, I had my pin straightener. So I had to do this for both the wide one and the thin one. So here it is again, the pins are spread and won't go on the board. And this is what we're gonna fix with the pin straightener. So you just drop the uh, integrated circuit in, squeeze, and that straightens out the pins. And then once you've got them straight, you can go back to the board and it drops right in. So it's a handy little tool to have on your electronics workbench. Now the larger one was a problem. There's a gap where the chip's supposed to sit into and it just wasn't big enough. They didn't design it big enough. This was a design flaw. So I thought, well, maybe I could just flip this thing over. And I tried that, but the pins stick out the sides, so it's still not getting the whole chip. So I decided to just do one side, then slide it over and do the other side. And despite all that, it didn't seem to really push the pins enough. I still couldn't get the larger package into its spot. So I went back to my old-fashioned method where you just take the chip and just kind of roll it on its side a little bit and then do this for both sides. This is harder with the smaller ones, but definitely easy with these bigger ones. You get a nice straight edge and then it pops right into the board. So I'll stick with my little tricky method and I don't think I'll use the print straightener for these larger ones. This smaller one is great, but this larger one, piece of crap. That's it for this week. This turned out okay. I don't know how much I'll use it, but this I think I'll use all the time. I just want to print it again in a much more solid fill so it's a little stronger. 
Well, if you like projects like this or like this, maybe check out some of the videos popping up over here. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month is always appreciated on Patreon. But if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. That's it. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.